Book of Acts chapters 13 to 16 Paul's first missionary journey Chapter 13 Paul's separation to reach the Gentiles Peter, along with the other eleven apostles, were called as apostles to the circumcision, Jews, and not to the uncircumcised, Gentiles. That responsibility was given to Paul as the apostle of the Gentiles. Galatians 2 verses 7 to 9 But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision, was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. This ministry to the circumcision did not cease for the twelve after the cross, it remained their calling until their deaths. Paul was specifically called out by God to be a light unto the Gentiles. While he is the apostle of the Gentiles, he also took the gospel to the Jews first in every city in his Acts ministry. After his Acts ministry Paul no longer went to the Jew first on his last missionary journey. Acts 13 verses 1 to 2 Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas, and Simeon that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Menin, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord, and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. Remember Saul's conversion, and what was said about him, he was called to bear God's name before the Gentiles. Paul is now getting farther away from the Jewish homeland. Israel is left in the hands of the twelve apostles to the circumcision and Paul is about to reach his first Gentile converts, but not before reaching the Jews in the city of Antioch. The church that was at Antioch The church in Antioch was made up of kingdom saints with the exception of Saul of Tarsus. Now God would call the apostle of the Gentiles to be separated from this church to begin his ministry among the Gentiles. Menin, he was brought up with Herod. They grew up around each other and knew each other well. Herod the Tetrarch, ruler of one quarter of the region. He ruled the Galilee. Luke 3 verse 1 Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. To be separated from something means that they were also separated unto something new and different. Neither Jerusalem nor Antioch called Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto they were called, the Holy Ghost did, and they had to be separated from the work going on there in Antioch. The word apostle means a sent one. They were called when the Holy Ghost spoke to the church in Antioch. This does not happen today. Today the Bible says if a man desires the office of a bishop, he desireth a good thing. 1 Timothy 3 verse 1 Acts 13 verses 3 to 5 And when they had fasted and prayed, and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So, they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. They preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. We see Paul here going into a Jewish synagogue first before going to the Gentiles to preach. This would be his pattern for the whole of the book of Acts. After Israel was blinded in part by God for their rejection of Christ, that pattern switched from to the Jew first, to every creature without exception. The Jew lost his advantage when blindness in part was set in Romans 11 verse 25. There is now no longer any distinction between Jew and Gentile, we are all one in Christ. This was not known however until midway through the book of Acts when it was revealed unto the Apostle Paul and somehow it has been forgotten today. They had also John to their minister, this was Barnabas's nephew John Mark, also called Marcus. Philemon 1 verse 24 Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers.
Colossians 4 verse 10 Aristarchus my fellow prisoner saluteth you, and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom ye receive commandments, if he come unto you, receive him. 1 Peter 5 verse 13 The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus my son. The Blinding of a Jew Acts 13 verses 6 to 8 And when they had gone through the island to Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bargesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul, and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimas the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. A certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bargesus, Bargesus means, son of salvation. He was a Jewish false prophet, a sorcerer. He serves as a perfect picture of Israel's spiritual condition at that time. He was a Jew that did not want the Gentile Sergius Paulus to hear the gospel. Just like how the religious Jews would try to prevent Paul from preaching to the Gentiles. Sergius Paulus, a Gentile who was called a prudent man, meaning he was a sensible man. Acts 13 verses 9 to 10 Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Saul, who is also called Paul, this is the first time Saul's Roman Gentile name is used which is Paul. Filled with the Holy Ghost, Paul knew what God was going to do because he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Paul was able to accomplish miracles in front of the Jews as they required a sign as to God working through him. Thou child of the devil, for Jesus is called by Paul exactly what he was. Jesus also called religious Pharisees the children of their father the devil. John 8 verse 44, Acts 13 verse 11 And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. Israel today is like Bargesus slash Elimas, blind spiritually speaking and in need of someone to lead them in the things of God. Their blindness is mentioned in Romans 11 verse 25 and thankfully, it is only for a season. Judah's last king was also blinded for his disobedience. 2 Kings 25 verses 6 to 7. Acts 13 verse 12 Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, Sergius Paulus was Paul's first Gentile convert. How sad that it was that a Jew was mixed up in sorcery, and he was hindering this Gentile from being saved. Acts 13 verse 13 Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia, and John departing from them returned to Jerusalem. Now when Paul and his company, Paul is now used first, and the team has called his company to denote he would be the leader of this new ministry. Everything was fine when John Mark was helping Paul on the east side of the island where they ministered in synagogues to Jews. When John Mark, a kingdom saint, saw what happened on the west side of the island in saving a Gentile ruler and how God blinded a Jew, it was too much at that time for John Mark with his Jewish past. This departure of John Mark had so upset Paul that when John Mark had proven himself to many at a later date, Paul still thought it not wise to take him with them on that journey, so Paul and Barnabas would part ways at that time. Antioch in Pisidia, Acts 13 verses 14 to 16, But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up, and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. Went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, Paul went to the Jew first everywhere he went until after his first release in Rome after Acts 28. They went into synagogues because they wanted to win Jews to Christ, and that is when and where Jews went to study. We, 
as the body of Christ today, are not under Israel's command to keep the Sabbath day. We are not Israel. Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, the Jews were the men of Israel, and the ones that fear God were the Gentiles that were in attendance in the synagogue. Whether they were proselytes or not, we cannot know for certain, because scripture remains silent on this issue. Acts 13 verses 17 to 26 The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with an high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Shinon, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that he gave unto them judges about the space of four hundred and fifty years, until Samuel the prophet. And afterward they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony, and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God according to his promise raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus, when John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of the salvation sent. Children of the stock of Abraham, the Jews, and whosoever among you that feareth God, those Gentiles that believed on Jesus. Acts 13 verses 27 to 33 For they that dwell at Jerusalem, and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree, and laid him in a sepulchre. But God raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise, which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Psalm 2 verse 7 I will declare the decree, the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 8 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. The promise, which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again. Christ's resurrection was not a mystery in the Old Testament scripture. Paul was speaking to Jews proving to them that Jesus was the one spoken about in Psalm 2 verse 7. Acts 13 verse 34 And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Isaiah 55 verse 3 Incline your ear, and come unto me, here, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Acts 13 verse 35 Wherefore he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Psalm 16 verse 10 For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Acts 13 verses 36 to 39 For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, 
fell on sleep, and was laid unto his fathers, and saw corruption, but he, whom God raised again, saw no corruption. Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. By him all that believe are justified from all things, by faith in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection a person would be justified from all things. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4 From which he could not be justified by the law of Moses, keeping the law could not justify a person. The law could, however, show them that they needed a savior. Acts 13 verses 40 to 41 Beware therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets, Behold, ye despisers, and wonder, and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. Habakkuk 1 verse 5 Behold ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. God warned the Jews through the prophet Habakkuk and others that he would bring the Chaldeans down upon them, but the nation of Israel did not believe those messengers then. Paul was reminding them of this truth and warning them not to repeat the same mistake, but they would not believe the work that God would do unto them in bringing the Messiah. Acts 13 verses 42 to 45 And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy, and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Religious proselytes, one thing of interest here is that the Gentiles besought Paul to preach to them on the next Sabbath day the things concerning the grace of God. Paul, as he would travel, would always go to the Jew first early in his ministry, and where would you expect to find the most Jews assembled together on a certain day of the week? They would be in the synagogues of course on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath was given to the Jews under the law. Exodus 20 verse 8 Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Nehemiah 9 verses 13 to 14 Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai, and spakest with them from heaven, and gavest them right judgments, and true laws, good statutes, and commandments, and madest known unto them thy holy Sabbath, and commandest them precepts, statutes, and laws, by the hand of Moses thy servant. This would be only the second time that Gentiles would hear the gospel of the grace of God that we can find in the scripture. Acts 20 verse 24 and 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. We turn to the Gentiles. Acts 13 verse 46 Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Paul did not go to the Jews first because he was a Jew. He went because it was necessary to go to the Jew first. Romans 1 verse 16 Ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. The Jews here rejected the word of God concerning Jesus Christ being their Messiah. They put it from them, willfully. Paul gets his first group of Gentile converts here, the first among thousands that would spread out and turn the world upside down. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. This was the first of three times that Paul says that he is going to the Gentiles. The other two times are Acts 18 verse 6 and 28 colon 28. These believers in Antioch of Pisidia formed the first grace church in the world. Jews and Gentiles in one body. Acts 13 verse 47 For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Isaiah 49 verse 6 And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. 
Acts 13 verse 48, And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. As many as were ordained to eternal life believed, the word ordained means appointed. When were Gentiles appointed or ordained to eternal life? Before the world began. Ephesians 1 verse 4 According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9 Who hath saved us, and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Titus 1 verse 2 In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Acts 13 verses 49 to 50 And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. But the Jews stirred up the devout. These Jews, just like Bar Jesus in the beginning of this chapter, tried to keep Gentiles from hearing the gospel so they may be saved. Acts 13 verses 51 to 52 But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. They shook off of the dust of their feet against them. This was a testimony against their fellow Jews regarding their rejection of the truth. It meant that they were innocent of their blood because they had told them the truth of God's word. Isaiah 52 verse 2 Shake thyself from the dust, arise, and sit down, O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Matthew 10 verse 14 And Whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Chapter 14 Paul is stoned. Acts 14 verses 1 to 3 And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake, that a great multitude both of the Jews and also of the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. A great multitude both of the Jews and also of the Greeks believed. Jews and Greeks who were in the synagogue together heard the gospel and believed. This would necessitate a church be established in Iconium as well. The word Greeks comes from the Greek word Helen. Joel 3 verse 6 The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border. John 12 verse 20 And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast, and granted that signs and wonders to be done by their hands, these signs were for the Jews' sake, because they had become accustomed to signs in the first covenant, they now were requiring signs at the onset of the new covenant. Notice also that these signs and wonders were granted only to these two individuals in this place. God could have chosen not to grant any miraculous powers to them in Iconium, or he could have granted them to others. They were granted on a limited basis to verify his word. Acts 14 verses 4 to 7, But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles, and also of the Jews with their rulers, to use them despitefully, and to stone them, they were aware of it, and fled unto Lystra and Derb, cities of Lycaonia, and unto the region that leath round about, and there they preached the gospel. The apostles, we see also here that Barnabas was also called an apostle, who traveled with Paul reaching out to the Jews, as well as to the Gentiles, but it is Paul who is called the apostle of the Gentiles. Ephesians 4 verse 11 and Romans 11 verse 13. Acts 14 verses 8 to 10 And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. He had faith to be healed. The impotent man had faith to be healed after listening to Paul preach. 
Acts 14 verses 11 to 13, And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lycaonia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas, Jupiter, and Paul, Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people. Jupiter, he was king of the gods in Greek mythology. Mercurius, Mercury was the Greek god of merchandise, eloquence, and communication and he was a guide of souls in the underworld. These gods were devils in disguise. Acts 14 verses 14 to 18 which when the apostles, Barnabas, and Paul, heard of, they rent their clothes, and ran in among the people, crying out, and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and all things that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good, and gave us rain from heaven, and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings scarce restrained they the people, that they had not done sacrifice unto them. They rent their clothes, this was symbolic of extreme anger, or despair. Genesis 37 verse 29 God had granted apostolic powers to Paul and Barnabas. Acts 14 verse 19 And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and, having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. These Jews came from the two cities where Paul had just established two churches at. This pattern is followed by the religious Jews numerous times trying to stop the spread of their teachings. Having stoned Paul, many people teach that Paul was caught up to heaven and seen things unlawful to utter while he was left for dead. That is a false teaching. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 2 I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, such an one caught up to the third heaven. Revelation 10 verse 4 And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. Please, stop teaching this myth. Paul here was referring to the apostle John who had seen things he was not allowed to write about. Revelation 10 verse 4 Paul wrote about everything he saw from the risen Christ, and even said he would not glory in himself but in the person he had known 14 years ago, who was John. Acts 14 verse 20 Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up, and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derb. He rose up. Paul was not going to die before he finished his course that God had for him. He had to get to Rome and preach. Acts 14 verses 21 to 23 And when they had preached the gospel to that city, and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra, and to Iconium, and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples, and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church, and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord, on whom they believed. Confirming the souls of the disciples, this was them ensuring that they had believed the gospel that they were preaching to them. Acts 20 verse 24 and 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. We must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Paul never preached the kingdom of heaven message that was preached in the four gospels. The kingdom of God encompasses all ages, whereas the kingdom of heaven is a specific 1,000-year promise made unto Israel. Do not confuse the two. They had ordained them elders in every church. This is speaking about the new believers in Antioch of Pisidia, Iconium, Lystra, and Derb and concerning establishing churches and leaders in their churches. Acts 14 verses 24 to 28 And after they had passed throughout Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Italia, 
and then sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. Antioch, this is the Antioch of Syria where they were separated from by the Holy Ghost from to begin the work that the Holy Ghost had called them unto. Acts 13 verse 2 from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled, that mission had been accomplished and many Gentiles and Jews had heard the gospel of the grace of God and were saved, and several grace churches were established in Asia Minor. The team that had gone on this apostolic trip had been recommended by the Kingdom Church in Antioch, but only after the Holy Ghost called them and separated them from the work they were currently doing in Antioch. He, God, had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. This statement does not in any way contradict what Peter said at the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15 verses 1 to 11. Peter did not say that God had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles as Luke affirms that is what happened with Paul and Barnabas' team. He says only that God made choice among the twelve apostles that Peter would be the first to preach the gospel of the kingdom to the Gentiles and that their hearts would be purified by faith. Peter was preaching the gospel of the kingdom message to a Gentile in Israel that had already been fulfilling Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3 by blessing the seed of Abraham. Acts 10 verse 2 these Gentiles would no longer have to submit to circumcision and have to become a part of Israel now because God had cleansed the Gentiles. Acts 10 to 11. Paul, on the other hand, and his team established grace. Churches out in Gentile lands made up of Jews and Gentiles in one body. Peter never goes to another Gentile after preaching to Cornelius' family. He, and the other apostles restrict their ministry solely to the Jews, the circumcision, and they give Barnabas and Paul the right hand of fellowship to go unto the Gentiles. Galatians 2 verses 7 to 9 But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. As apostles, Paul and Barnabas had the responsibility to confirm that these new churches believed and taught the truth. It is here, back in Antioch of Syria, that Peter makes a visit having been sent by James the Lord's brother, and he gets straightened out by Paul for his hypocrisy. Galatians 2 verses 11 to 14, But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not, Uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them, All, if thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? It was at this time that Paul wrote Galatians, which stands to reason that the revelations in Galatians must not have been known prior to this time. This explains the problem that arises in chapter 15 that required a council to resolve. This ended Paul's first apostolic missionary journey. Chapter 15 The Jerusalem Conference Acts 15 verse 1 And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren, and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Certain men which came down from Judea this is speaking about coming down in elevation, as Jerusalem was higher in elevation than Antioch of Syria was. If it were a directional statement, it would read certain men came north from Judea. 
Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Circumcision had been practiced since the time of Abraham, and the thought of a Gentile being right with God without being circumcised was unthinkable to many Jews. Cornelius' household, however, was never circumcised because their hearts were purified by faith in the gospel being preached by Peter and the eleven. Acts 15 verse 2 When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas, and certain other of them, should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. They determined that Paul and Barnabas, and certain other of them, should go up to Jerusalem, that they were those of the church in Antioch, not the certain men that came down from Judea. This is where Paul was given a revelation to go up unto Jerusalem concerning this matter. Galatians 2 verses 1 to 2. Paul was not ordered there by the apostles in Jerusalem. God revealed that he should go to educate them in Jerusalem. They added nothing unto Paul's knowledge for it was God who was educating those in the conference in Jerusalem concerning what God was now doing through Paul's ministry. Galatians 2 verses 6 to 10 But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it mocketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's person for they, who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me, but, contrariwise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he, that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. Paul's ministry was preaching the gospel of the grace of God unto the world, while Peter and the eleven preached the gospel of the circumcision unto the Jews only, the circumcision. Galatians 2 verses 6 to 9 above. Acts 15 verses 3 to 4 And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phenis and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church, and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. Being brought on their way by the church, this meant that the church in Antioch financed their journey and assisted it. They passed through Phenis and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. These are the areas where Jewish kingdom saints were scattered after the persecution that arose concerning Stephen. Acts 8 verse 1 and 11 colon 9. Acts 15 verses 5 to 6. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. The sect of the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the straightest sect, branch, of Judaism. The word sect in Greek is actually the Greek word heresy. Acts 26 verse 5. They tried to move right in and impose Judaism on top of these new mostly Gentile grace believers. Judaism concerned a nation, and circumcision is what separated Israel from the nations. A Gentile does not become Israel or spiritual Israel once they get saved. Jews and Gentiles are one in the body of Christ today so there is no need of circumcision and the law to separate us. Israel had fallen as a nation with God in Acts 7 with the stoning of Stephen. There was a transition period in the book of Acts where you see the emphasis shift from Peter and the eleven in the beginning working with the Jews only, to Paul and his company later on going to the whole world building the body of Christ. Acts 15 verses 7 to 9 And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. A good while ago, 
Peter is speaking of his one-time outreach to Cornelius' household in Acts 10, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith, the Gentiles who believed were declared clean. Acts 10 verse 15 Remember Cornelius was able to be purified by faith in Christ even though he was not circumcised. He did however bless Israel in accordance with Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3 which got God's blessings to come to him. Today we do not have to bless a Jew in order to have the gospel come to us, because Israel is in unbelief today. Acts 15 verses 10 to 11 Now therefore why tempt ye God, to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples. Peter was saying that these Gentiles, the disciples, who received the Holy Spirit by faith without being circumcised, had no need to add circumcision and keeping the law after they believed in Christ. Acts 15 verse 12 Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Barnabas and Paul Barnabas, a Jewish kingdom saint, is listed first while at the Jerusalem council, but Paul is always listed first when he is out among the Gentiles. Acts 15 verse 13, And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. James, the Lord's half-brother, who became the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. Acts 15 verse 14 Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Acts 10 to 11. Acts 15 verses 15 to 17 And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return, and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles, upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Amos 9 verses 11 to 12 In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Acts 15 verse 18 Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. The Gentiles having a relationship with God should not have been a shock to the Jews neither should it be today, but since the Jews as a whole are blinded in part, they still do not see the Gentiles in favor with God. Acts 15 verses 19 to 20 Wherefore my sentence is, that we trouble not them, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them, that they abstain from pollutions of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. Acts 21 verse 29 My sentence is, his decree as the leader of the assembly. Abstain from pollutions of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. The first two decrees were spiritual in nature, while the second two were more physical in nature. Genesis 9 verse 4, Leviticus 19 verse 4, Matthew 5 verse 32, and Acts 21 verse 29. The pollutions of idols, this is concerning the meat that Gentiles eat that was offered as a sacrifice to idols. Verse 29, Acts 15 verse 21, For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Them that preach him, Jews who preach the law of Moses to other Jews in synagogues everywhere. James was telling the Jews not to worry about how this would affect Jews because they had synagogues everywhere that were still preaching the law of Moses to fellow Jews. Acts 21 verse 20. Acts 15 verse 22 Then pleased it the apostles and elders, with the whole church, to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely, Judas surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. Judas surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, bar at the beginning of a name meant the son of. The son of Sabas, just as Barnabas was the son of Nabas. This is not the. Barsabas of Acts 1 verse 23. They would call him Judas Barsabas to differentiate him from all the others named Judas. Judas is Greek for Judah, 
one of the most popular names in all of Israel. Silas would later travel with Paul on his second missionary journey. Verse 40 and Acts 16 to 17. Acts 15 verses 23 to 24 And they wrote letters by them after this manner, The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, forasmuch as we have heard, that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, Ye must be circumcised, and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. The brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, a Gentile no longer had to become a proselyte to Judaism in order to be saved. Acts 15 verses 25 to 29 It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost, and to us, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. It seemed good to the Holy Ghost, and to us, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. Number 613 laws like the Jews had to keep under the law of Moses. From which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, if the Gentile believers kept themselves from these four things, they would have a good witness to lost Jews and kingdom believers scattered among them. That ye abstain from meats offered to idols. Here we are given more clarity as to what it means above concerning the pollution of idols. Should they eat meat offered to idols? No, it polluted the meat, and those that partook of it would weaken their weaker brethren concerning it. Paul would give the body of Christ further revelation when he receives it concerning this matter in 1 Corinthians 8 verse 10 and 10 colon 1. The Epistle at Antioch. Acts 15 verses 30 to 31 So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. The consolation, the letter brought clarification to the two groups as to the differences between them and how to deal with them. There would be more differences after Acts 28 as Paul would receive his last revelations from Christ then. Acts 15 verses 32 to 34, Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And after they had tarried their space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding it pleased Silas to abide there still. Judas and Silas being prophets also themselves, they were prophets from Jerusalem's kingdom church. Judas returned to that assembly while Silas remained with Paul to help in what God was now doing with the whole world. And confirmed them, they were sent to let that assembly know that the epistle was truly the words of the Jerusalem assembly. It pleased Silas to abide there still. He would soon be chosen by Paul when he and Barnabas had a disagreement concerning John Mark. Acts 15 verse 40. While Silas was joining Paul helping the body of Christ, he would have remained a recipient of the kingdom promises seeing he began in that program. There was no jumping out of the kingdom promises and into the body of Christ for Silas, Barnabas, John Mark, or any others for that matter because the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Romans 11 verse 29. Acts 15 verse 35 Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, with many others also. What they taught at this time was only a part of what Paul would eventually receive in the upcoming years from the risen Lord. Paul's Second Missionary Journey Acts 15 verse 36 And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord, and see how they do. And some days after, after they returned to Antioch of Syria with the letter from James and the Apostles. Acts 15 verses 37 to 41 And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. 
and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other, and so, Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. John, whose surname was Mark, John left the work just after the seeing Paul's first Gentile convert in Acts 13, Sergius Paulus, while a Jew was blinded, bar Jesus. Apostles and the gifts that followed them were necessary in the early days of the church to confirm their doctrine while the canon of scripture was being completed. When the scripture was completed, they put away the childish things because that which was perfect, complete, had come. Chapter 16 Paul's Second Missionary Journey Acts 16 verses 1 to 3 Then came he to Derb and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there, named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. A certain disciple was there, named Timotheus. The word disciples is not used exclusively with just kingdom saints. Numerous saints in the body of Christ were called disciples beginning in Acts 15 verse 10 going through Acts 20 verses 1 and 7 and 30. Timotheus, Timothy, was Paul's young soldier in the faith who would later receive Paul's final epistle for the body of Christ just before Paul was martyred, 2 Timothy. Timothy was a member of the body of Christ because Paul called him his own son in the faith, which meant Paul begot him through the gospel of the grace of God. 1 Timothy 1 verse 2 A kingdom saint could not jump from his kingdom program into the body of Christ. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Romans 11 verse 29 This verse concerns Israel, not us today. A Jewess a Jewish woman. His mother's name was Eunice, and his grandmother's was Lois. They were both believers. Acts 24 verse 24 and 2 Timothy 1 verse 5. And circumcised him because of the Jews. Paul did not have to circumcise Timotheus, he did so for expediency. The Jews would not listen to Timotheus if they knew he was not circumcised, which those in his area already knew. To the Jews, Timothy became as a Jew that he might gain the Jews. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 20 Acts 16 verses 4 to 5 And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep, that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Paul and Timothy were commissioned to go to the Gentiles by the Holy Spirit in Antioch, not by the church in Jerusalem. Later Paul would begin to receive an abundance of revelations concerning the church. Acts 15 verse 28 and 29 They delivered them the decrees for to keep. Acts 15 verse 20 It was Paul that went to Jerusalem by revelation of Jesus Christ to tell them what God was doing through them with the Gentiles. The apostles were the ones who gave ground here, not Paul. The epistles, letters, they sent were to say Paul was right, not the people who came down from Jerusalem who were trying to impose the law on the Gentiles. Acts 15 verse 20 So were the churches established in the faith. The faith was already being preached by Paul before the four decrees were given. Acts 16 verses 6 to 8 Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they passing by Mysia came down to Troas. Forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, this was speaking of parts of Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, not the continent of Asia. The gospel was to go west, first to Rome, and then to the whole world. Soon Paul would return and all of Asia, minor, would hear the word of the Lord. Acts 19 verse 10 Bithynia, Jews had been scattered there and in Asia earlier. 1 Peter 1 verse 1 John had just written seven church epistles to seven kingdom churches in Revelation 2 and 3. 
Peter would write two epistles meant for both of these cities, along with three other cities that had kingdom churches in them. 1 Peter 1 verse 1 Paul would not build upon another man's foundation. Romans 15 verse 20 Paul was a wise master builder, but he did not lay grace doctrine in the kingdom churches established when the Jerusalem saints fled Jerusalem at the persecution that arose concerning Stephen. Acts 8 verse 1 The Macedonian Call Acts 16 verses 9 to 10 And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia, and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. Paul would later on receive another night vision while in the city of Corinth. Acts 18 verse 9 Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 1 It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Come over into Macedonia and help us. Paul would sometimes make a plan to go somewhere and preach the gospel there, and at other times God would intervene to give him direction. Acts 16 verses 11 to 12 Therefore loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Nepolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. A colony, this meant it was a Roman city, a colony of Rome, with special laws and privileges. Acts 16 verses 13 to 14 And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside, where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down, and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. On the Sabbath, the women were Jews who were praying by the riverside on the Sabbath day because there was no synagogue to pray in. A certain woman named Lydia, she was the first convert in Europe. Lydia and her family would eventually make up the nucleus of the church at Philippi along with the Philippian jailer and the women that were with Lydia down by the riverside. A seller of purple, purple dye. Of the city of Thyatira, a city in Asia Minor that Paul wanted to go to but was forbidden. Revelation 2 verses 18 to 29, which worshipped God. She was a good Jew who worshipped God according to the law of Moses. She was not a kingdom saint, or she would have been baptized as that was required to be a kingdom saint. Whose heart the Lord opened, the word of the Lord opened her heart. Luke 24 verse 32. Acts 16 verse 15 And when she was baptized, and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house, and abide there. And she constrained us. She was baptized, and her household, Paul had been given only some revelations at this time concerning the church, he would receive more as time went on. Paul would soon reveal that God never sent him to baptize, but to preach the gospel. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 17 The twelve apostles to the circumcision were definitely commanded and sent to baptize. Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20 and Mark 16 verses 15 to 17. Acts 16 verses 16 to 18 And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying, the same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned, and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination, a demonic spirit who gives advice. Numbers 22 7 And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand, and they came unto Balaam, and spake unto him the words of Balak. 1 Samuel 28 verse 8 And Saul disguised himself, and put on other raiment, and he went, and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night, and he said, I pray thee, 
divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. Soothsaying, like Balaam. Joshua 13 verse 22 Balaam, also the son of Beer, the soothsayer, did the children of Israel slay with the sword among them that were slain by them. Acts 16 verses 19 to 21 And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas, and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers, and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs, which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. Satan does not like competition, especially when he has been in control in an area for some time, so his minions began to oppose the truth being taught. Acts 16 verses 22 to 26 And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. At midnight, God killed all the firstborn of Egypt at night to deliver Israel from their slavery. Exodus 12 he delivers Israel with Samson in Judges 16 verse 3 at night. He gives Ruth to Boaz in Ruth 3 verse 8. He comes for his bride in Matthew 25 verse 6, and he raised Eutychus from the dead at midnight. Acts 20 verses 7 to 9. He will deliver Israel in the darkest night the world has ever seen at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30 verse 7. Acts 16 verses 27 to 31 And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword, and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Notice the different response of Paul to the same question that was asked in Acts chapter 2 when the Jews heard Peter's preaching. Peter's reply. Acts 2 verse 38 Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Israel had to repent and be baptized under the gospel of the kingdom preaching by Peter and the eleven apostles. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. This gospel, good news, is trusting alone in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4 and the following verse. Acts 16 verses 32 to 33, And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. They spake unto him the word of the Lord. Paul did not just say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he spake unto him, and his whole house the word of the Lord concerning what they needed to do to be saved. They had to believe the gospel and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. This was not done as a public testimony to all those in Philippi. It was done after midnight, straightway. Acts 16 verses 34 to 40, And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the sergeants, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told this saying to Paul, The magistrates have sent to let you go, now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison, and now do. They thrust us out privily? Nay verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans.
And they came and besought them, and brought them out, and desired them to depart out of the city. And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia, and when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. Paul and Silas could have had them arrested and thrown into prison for their treatment of Roman citizens, but they did not. Paul showed them mercy. Mm -hmm.